My dad. He grew up in the northern part of Minnesota on a four-generation family farm. He loved nature and he spent his time playing in the forest. As he got older, he became, he got into the military service. He was a ham radio operator and he flew airplanes. He then attended the University of Minnesota where he received a degree in chemistry. In the 1970s, he built his first computer. And when he did that, he taught himself how to do programming. And he taught me, and I managed to make my very first program, which was a smiley face. <laughs> kind of a primitive version of an emoji, I guess you'd say. <laughs> so I remember growing up, we would have these family reunions in the summertime, huge. And my dad would always stand up and say, Cindy, can you dance for us? And of course, you know, I did because I love to dance. And I loved it so much, I ended up getting, I went to college and I got my degrees in dance. And I learned how to choreograph. And I also learned how to edit sound and, and film. And during that time, I also got my first computer. And I applied it to dance, all of that, film and all of that. Technology has found its way in every field of knowledge and action. It serves profoundly as a medium for all art. And many would argue that technology has recently advanced to becoming an art within itself. In the world of dance, technology has served choreographers since the 1970s, where film and motion capture were added to the stage. Using technology with audio, visual, and the choreographic process has been a part of my practice, a very important part. It has enhanced the movement capabilities, atmosphere, and the sensitivity of my work and for me that is the future of artistic creativity in dance. About a year ago I created a, a piece about trees and the forest and it was entitled after a Japanese uh, therapy called Shinrin Yoku and that it basically involves simply wandering through the forest and appreciating its beauty. So I wanted to capture this feeling on stage. I used suspended trees, and in collaboration with the designers, we were able to uh, produce this desired look, and I was very happy with the results. Yes! A few months after that, I was invited to reconstruct the work and unfortunately the rustic theater where that was to happen uh, didn't have a fly system so there was no way I could hang those suspended trees. Now what? So well I thought of a saying that my dad used to say take what you have and make the best of it. So I started taking photographs of trees and I, I took film of the trees and a thousand trees later I found six images that would best support and represent the original trees. So I dropped them into a digital editing program and I started creating. This process allowed me to experiment and discover deeper meaning to the piece. And eventually, the trees surpass their original look, becoming surreal and even causing a whole new dimension toward the work. Another obstacle was I had to take the 28-minute piece and condense it into a 10-minute excerpt. That's two-thirds of the piece gone. 10 minutes was basically the beginning and the end. 
How was I going to build a trajectory without a middle? Well, I had to make it happen. <laughs> so I started analyzing the video and, of the original work, and I thought, well, w what if I combine sections? What if I put sections together? So I started to edit the video, cutting and layering footage, making the top layer more transparent than the bottom. This allowed me to see two groups of dancers performing at the same time. It also made me realize that I could put the middle section within the beginning and the end and stay in that 10 minute time frame. As well, I began to understand that I could reorganize and even re-choreograph via video editing before I went into the, perform or the rehearsal process. In the end, and like in the original work, I was very happy with the piece. Yes. <laughs> the future of technology doesn't just mean <clears throat> creating technology on stage. It also means creating or using technology within the choreographic process. The future of creativity must not forget the past, where it came from. Dance and technology were a part of my life because of my dad's influence. His fascination with technology and nature as well as being a creative inventor, were all part of what made me the artist that I became. Sadly, a month and a half ago, I lost my dad to cancer. So I would like to dedicate this presentation to my dad. With the dancers from SUNY Potsdam, Department of Theater and Dance, may we present to you Shinrin Yoku. Thank you. 